What's going on everybody? My name is James Reiner. One of the things that I really like to do is preserve my video games. And the Sega Dreamcast being one of my favorite consoles is one of my main focuses of preservation. Now that being said, some of you may know that there are some awesome devices out there that allow us to preserve our games in, you know, uh, formats other than burning CDs or, you know, keeping multiple copies of our games. And that, of course, are devices like GDMU or USB GD-ROM. And those devices are awesome! Optical disc emulators are an amazing thing. However, if you're like myself, you may have, you know, quite a few games, and there's only so much room you have on the USB sticks or the SD cards that you use for these devices. So, today I'm going to be showing you how you can shrink some Dreamcast games to be able to save space on your USB stick or your SD card or your compact flash card whatever you're using. Now this method doesn't work with every game, it works with some games, and it also is heavily dependent on how said game was modified to run in CDI format, but I'll show you a general procedure that I go through to kind of shrink down CDI file sizes, and yeah, so let's just jump right into it. So for today's example, we're going to be using a release of Trigger Heart Excelica for the Dreamcast. And pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to mount this CDI to a virtual drive in Windows, extract the files from it, and remove the dummy files from the CDI release to pretty much shrink, you know, the release itself. So let me go ahead and mount this in Daemon Tools. So here we have the uh, CDI release, right? And you'll see there's a bunch of files here. We have a first read file. We have some other stuff. And what you see here may differ by what CDI release that you're using of whatever game or how the team that made this uh, made the release. But for this sake, this is a very simplified um, game to use this procedure on. So let's go ahead and highlight all these files and drag and drop them into our little development folder here. Wait for that to complete. And let's open up our folder that we just dropped everything into. So these are the files that make up the CDI release, right? And all of these files are important. Some of them contain game data, some of them contain release notes from the release team you know so on and so forth and there are two files here that we're interested in these two dat files you see it's called like 0a dmy.dat 0b dmy.dat and you're probably wondering what are these two files so pretty much these files are what we call dummy files right dmy probably stands for dummy in this case now it may be called something like this and maybe called dummy.dat and the dummy file is a file that's used in CDI releases of Dreamcast games you know actually for a couple of different reasons but to make it really simple way back in the old days of Dreamcast scene releases um, there was a situation where some releases would really hurt the disk drive of the console and the dummy file is used to help you know not have that happen now not to get too technical but when you burn data to a disk because these are these CDI releases are meant to be burned to CDRs or CDRWs if you modify the pot on your Dreamcast and the DAT file is as you can see like Alphabetically, it kind of sits in the front, and what it kind of does is, is it fills a gap on the disk so that all of the good stuff is all right next to each other physically on the disk so that the Dreamcast laser, the GD-ROM assembly, doesn't have to move too far to get all of this good data while it's playing the game, thus putting less stress on your laser. Now, in the day and age where we use optical disk emulators like the GDEMU or the MNEMO USB GD-ROM, which is what I use, uh, we don't really need a dummy file. 
and we can remove them and then rebuild the CDI release with a smaller file size. Now, like I said, this doesn't always work, but I've had a couple of games work, uh, Crazy Taxi worked for me, Trigger Heart works for me, so on and so forth. In some games, don't even use a DAT file, or sorry, a dummy file, because they're big enough to fill the entire disk. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to simply just highlight these two files and delete them. But before I do, you can see that this DAT file is actually 380 megabytes, which is awesome. So like, we'll be saving a good uh, couple hundred megabytes of space here. So we're just going to delete these two items, and this is now our completed CDI release. Now what we need to do from here is rebuild this release so that it works as a self-bootable CDI file. And to do that, we need to go through a couple of steps. You're going to need some software. Now, some of this software I won't be linking in the video because I don't know the legal gray area of it. However, just Googling the names of the programs, you can find them very easily. Uh, they're on the DC Swap website. So we're going to need a copy of Bootmake, which uh, is a awesome front-end program that uh, incorporates all the uh, tools we need to build the CDI file. We're going to need a program called binhack32 so that we can write the uh, the IP boot sector and all that and get the game to pass the Dreamcast CRC checks. And yeah, so binhack32 and <clears throat> binhack32 ip.bin uh, in Bootmake, like I said, I won't be linking them. However, if you just Google them, you'll find them, no problem. So I have binhack32 set up to just launch in command line. Here, uh, I have it set in my Windows environment variables. And what we need to do is this. I'm going to call the binhack32 uh, file here, the executable. And it's first going to ask us for the name of the binary, which in this case is the first read executable binary here, which is this guy. Now this is usually called first read.bin, however, sometimes it could be called something else. But it's first read because literally it is the first read file, kind of, sort of. So the naming convention is actually practical. So first underscore read.bin, now Windows is not case sensitive, so we can do it in lowercase even though the file is uppercase. The boot sector is going to be this special file called ip.bin and what this is ip.bin for to not get too technical <clears throat> is a file that contains uh like the splash image for the sega you know producing whatever by sega uh, a little splash screen you get on the dreamcast it also houses some other information that allows the dreamcast to go ahead and boot the disc now this release doesn't come with an ip.bin file however i do have one Uh, this is actually a uh, mod that I'm working on right now. So I'm going to go here and actually steal the IP bin file from it because we can re bin hack it. So here we have ip.bin. So back in our little program here, we want to type in ip.bin. And we're going to have to enter the MS info value. Now I'm not going to get too in depth as to what this is. However, I just use 11702. And that's it. So it does its, you know, little hackity hacks and just pretty much marries the IP bin file into first read.bin and good to go. So now what we need to do is now that we have a complete self bootable image, we need to build it into a CDI file. And to do that, we will use our good old friend Bootmake. So I already uh, actually did a little test here. So we have our trigger heart, IP.bin. So it just kind of asks you, where's the game data? Where's the IP bin? Uh, where's the IP bin file? Sorry, I can't speak tonight. Uh, where do you want to put the temporary data while it's building? And where do you want the final image to be? Uh, I already have all that set up, so we just hit make. Oh, and you can change the volume names, whatever you want. I just leave it at boot make. So we hit make, and it does all this stuff, and it starts building the CDI. Created by Big Fury Sizius. Shout out to Sizius. Sizius is an awesome person. So we just kind of wait for this to finish. It's usually pretty quick if you're on a modern computer. And it says it's done. Uh, I didn't skip any of that. That's actually how long it took, which is awesome. 
So we press any key to continue, and you'll see on my desktop here, I now have this CDI file that we just built. Now let's compare real quick. Triggerheart Excelica, 707 megabytes. Test.cdi, which is our CDI, 226 megabytes. So what you can do here is you can now take this CDI file, rename it, whatever you want, put it on your USB stick, put it on your SD card, and you can either boot it on a real Dreamcast or you can load it up in an emulator. Okay, so here we have uh, Null DC. This is the SMA version. Uh, it has a lot of Shenmue fixes and an awesome background here. So we're going to go ahead and use this. We're going to hit normal boot. And as you can see here, I already have my test CDI file all ready to go. Hit OK. And now we can see if it works. Just skip the splash screen. So we get to the IP bin check right here. And there you go. That is a smaller CDI version of uh, Trigger Heart Excelica running. This game is actually pretty damn cool if you haven't played it before. So we'll just get to the main menu here just to show you that everything's all working good. So there you go. That <laughs> freaking sticky keys. So yeah, that's it. Pretty sweet. So I'm just gonna close this. And yeah, so that's how you shrink a Dreamcast CDI file to fit a little better on a USB stick or an SD card if you're using an optical disk emulator. Uh, it's also pretty cool if you're, uh, you know, just housing your collection in CDI format on your desktop or whatever for emulating purposes. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, thanks for watching. I hope this helps. I understand this is probably a bit of a niche topic, but I figured I'd put it out there anyway. And yeah, so as always, thanks for watching and, you know, happy game playing. <laughs>